From the early 90s to just a couple of years ago, Lori Dew was a familiar face on network news. She has the distinction of being the only person to anchor at all big three cable networks, CNN, MSNBC, and most recently Fox, where she served as anchor from 2000 to 2008 and also hosted her own weekend show. The campaign trail getting rougher tonight. Candidates turning from subtle jabs to outright insults. But behind Lori's impressive career, glamorous looks, and rising star status was a painful secret she hid for more than a decade. I recently met with Lori in New York City to talk about her 15-year battle with alcohol and how she finally got sober. When people look at me, they say, you don't look like an alcoholic. <laughs> how on earth could you have these kinds of problems? But outward appearances are obviously very deceiving, and they certainly were in my case. From the outside, I had it all. I had a great job at Fox News Channel. I had more friends than I could count, family that loved me, a beautiful apartment, the ability to take nice vacations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. None of that mattered because in the inside, I was a shell of a person. My self-esteem was very low, which is why in my 20s, I turned to alcohol. It made me feel better. It made me feel more confident. It seemingly made me happier. But as the years went on and my problem didn't get better, it actually got worse, I realized that I had to look at myself and see what it was that I was feeling so bad about and that I had to cover with alcohol. Where do you think that low self-esteem came from? Because like you said, you had a loving family. There was something inside of me that said, Laura, you're not good enough. I don't know where it came from. That's something that I still ask myself. You know, some of it I think, some of my low self-esteem I think started in my teenage years when a lot of us go through that awkward period. Well, I was very awkward. I was very tall and gawky and not one of the popular girls. Mm. And I think when I got a little older, alcohol was a way for me to fit in. And it was a way for me to feel like I mattered and, and it helped me feel like I belonged. And then the drinking just went from sort of normal in my early 20s. It wasn't even that bad in college. Mm. But then as I went into my 20s, it grew and grew. Mm -hmm. And then my drinking really took off in my 30s when I moved to New York. How bad did it get? When my drinking was at its worst, I would drink heavily two or three nights a week mm -hmm. and end up going to work or on weekends very hungover. Mm -hmm. And playing the same tape in my head over and over again, how could I have done this again? How could I have gone out and gotten so drunk last night when I swore that I was only going to have one or two drinks? And that was a question that after years and years of asking, I stopped asking, yeah. why did I do this? I just accepted the fact that that's how I thought I had to live. I really and truly thought that I had to drink every day or every other day in order just to live a normal life. I drank to make myself more interesting to others. Mm. And I drank to make other people more interesting. <laughs> when the truth of the matter is, I was very interesting the way I was and that alcohol was, was not doing me any favors. Mm. It just took me a really, really long time to realize that. Mm. But when I did, it was like a light went off. And I was so ready to get sober because I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. So when I made my decision, I literally got on my knees and I begged God for help the morning of March 14th, 2007. Mm. I said, I cannot do this anymore, God. Please help me. And that's when I knew the fight was over. Wow, wow. And he did help you. He did help me. How did your faith play a part in your recovery? My faith has played an enormous role in my sobriety. I would not be where I am, which is four years sober, four years mm -hmm. without a drink, without God's help. How do you negotiate a cocktail party these days? <laughs> I tend to go to a cocktail party for about 30 to 45 minutes. I say hi to everyone I need to say hi to. I shake hands. I have short conversations with people, etc. And then I leave. And you drink Pellegrino. And I drink Pellegrino. You know, I wish I had <laughs> bought stock in either Perrier <laughs> or Pellegrino four years ago because that's all I drink. It's probably all I will drink the rest of my life. Mm. Sometimes it's Pellegrino with lemon. Sometimes it's Pellegrino with lime. Sometimes if I'm really crazy, it'll be an orange slice. Or maybe I'll mix it with orange juice. But it's all about the sparkling water. And that's okay. I love it.
you've said now that the genie is out of the bottle, you just want to help people. How do you want to help people? I want to help people know that they are not alone. There are so many people who have an addiction to something, but maybe they're afraid to admit it. And even if they admit it, they're afraid to get help because they don't know where to go and they don't know what to do and they don't know that there are literally tens of thousands of resources out there mm. available. Today, Lori runs her own media training business and is hoping to get back on network news. She says Fox let her go because her contract had expired and they couldn't come to an agreement, not because of alcohol. But says no matter what the future holds, she's happier today than she's ever been. I'm grateful because going through this journey of sobriety and increasing my spiritual life has made me a much stronger person and a much happier person. And the woman you see sitting before you today is a really happy one. Mm. I feel like I'm finally becoming the woman I was meant to be. Yeah. And perhaps I'm becoming the woman God wants me to be. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, New York.